you, Carol and Bennett. Thank you for lighting our candles. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. As we remember the day of Pentecost, may the same power, love, and unity that blessed the first Christians touch us all. We welcome you, and God loves you. It's good to see some red out there also. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. In our news for this week, there's a couple of important things to announce. <clears throat> we are receiving the Pentecost offering today. There are envelopes back on the table for you to use if you so choose. Also, um, mark it as Pentecost offering on your, if you use a check. And starting next Sunday, we will start meeting downstairs in the Fellowship Hall for the summer months. And we are going to try something a little different. We're going to start with fellowship time at 1030 and the service at 11. So come before church and relax and have a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy our time together before the service. Then we can rush home and eat afterwards. Uh, please take note of the sensibility for today because of the changes that have been happening. Food is becoming more and more scarce for a lot of people. And also, I'm sure they still need volunteers for our ecumenical Bible study or Bible school this summer on July 31st to the 3rd. Are there any other announcements? If not, our gathering hymn is Spirit of the Living God, 288 in glory to God. Well, I, I think I did remember something, Muriel. Thank Too you. Too late. Uh, <laughs> one more thing. No, actually, uh, uh, you know, I, I sometimes realize that I have uh, taken for granted that we continue to have people join us online for worship, Facebook and YouTube. So still very, very grateful for anyone and everyone who participates through the Spirit in our worship gatherings together. Now, even though we will be downstairs, uh, I, want, I want folks to know that, that we will still be recording those and they still will be put up on the online platforms. So if you are, uh, I got that right, didn't I? Okay, thanks. Um, just so, so you'll know that, that uh, because we're going downstairs, it doesn't mean that we won't be available. responsive call to worship. God's loving spirit is here with us now. Praise be to God. The spirit breaks down all barriers that separate. Praise be to God. Come and worship in the unity of the spirit. We praise and worship God in spirit and in truth. Alleluia. Our hymn of praise. Come, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove, 279, in glory to God.
God's Spirit has gathered us for worship. Let us open ourselves to the work of the Spirit in making all things new, including our hearts and lives. That begins with confession, repentance, and forgiveness. Please join me in the honesty and trust of praying together in the Spirit. It is easy to see pride and prejudice in other people, and it is tempting to think we're better and smarter than they are. But God, we are no different. We too are foolishly proud. We too are afraid of people who are different from ourselves. Forgive us, O God. Help us to see and celebrate your life-giving spirit within the whole of creation, within all people, and in ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, we are Lord, we pray. Amen. Please join me in the responsive assurance of God's grace. Sisters and brothers, God is rich in mercy and abundant in compassion. God's boundless love breathes new life into us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are a forgiven people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Muriel, thank you for your help this morning, and Carol, thank you for the lovely music. I'm going to go and spend a few minutes with my friends at the back. Good old Bennett and Maddox. Good morning to you, my friends. Oh, very good. You're a good colorer. Hmm? Oh, listen, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Oh, your handprint. Great job. This morning, we celebrate something that we can't see that's invisible, but something important. We can't see the thing, the person, but we can see what happens because of it. So, I've got something to help us think about that today. Can you see... Yeah, let's see if we can get it out. There we go. No, oh, look at there. Can you see the wind? You can blow the wind, but we can't see it. What we can see is what it does, right? And that's pretty cool. Just put it right up to your mouth there, Maddox, and give her a whirl. Oh, good job. That's, the, that's called breath, and it's called spirit. When we go, and something happens like that, isn't that cool? You can make a wish. What would you wish for? It's a great wish, and I think that wish is going to come true sooner than you think. Today, we celebrate the Holy Spirit, which is like... When? Well, yeah. You want to do it now? Or you want to do it like next Sunday? Suits me. Stay tuned. These are for you to keep and to remind you of the way the Holy Spirit works for us, in us, Oh, you know what? You could take one for Caroline and Owen, too, couldn't you? Because we have plenty. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Amen. You guys are great. I'm so glad that we get to spend... Oh, wait a minute. I got something else for you. I forgot. There is a picture for you to color here of the Holy Spirit. And 
Oh, have you? Okay. And then there's a something. And you've got it in your office. That's right. <laughs> I already have it in my office. This is for a recipe for making bubbles. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it really is pretty easy. It's, it's as they say, not rocket science. Have fun. I'll see you later. Bye. Friends, I invite you to join your hearts and minds and spirits in a moment of prayer. Throughout the ages, holy and gracious God, you have given your spirit to help ancient words come alive in every generation. We gather because, once again, we need your renewal. We need your truth. We need your infilling love. We gather as those who look to you for all we need, as the scriptures are read and as your word is proclaimed, may the spirit of the risen Christ among us do powerful, wonderful, gracious things, we pray. Amen. Our Bible passage this morning is taken from the book of Acts, the second chapter Verses 1 through 21, this passage from Acts shows up every single year on Pentecost Sunday because it is Luke's version of the story of the formation, the birth of the church at Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the effects of that Holy Spirit in moving the church forward in mission. In the book of Acts, which is Luke's second volume, Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke and then the story of the church in the book of Acts. The star of the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit. And the things that the Holy Spirit make possible through the followers of Jesus as his people moving through the world sharing good news. The Holy Spirit opens doors, makes things happen, orchestrates things in ways that no one had planned on and empowered ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Do you think that that is relegated only to the past? No. I wish the book of Acts were still being rewritten today and written and written and written with the names and the faces and the places being out because the Spirit still empowers and the story still goes on. This is how it started. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, Ha! They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to me. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you say, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Hmm. Or so. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, Blood and fire, smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. A police officer pulled over a speeding car. And as the police officer walked up to the driver's window, the driver rolled the window down, and the policeman said, I clocked you at doing over 80 miles an hour, sir. The driver said, Gee, officer, I don't really understand. See, I had, I had the cruise control set on 60. You might want to have your radar gun recalibrated. And at that point, the person's wife, sitting next to them in the passenger seat, without looking up from her knitting, said, Now, dear, you know that our car doesn't have cruise control. The driver looked over to his wife, and between clenched teeth said, Can't you please keep your mouth shut for once? And she answered, Well, dear, you really ought to be thankful that the radar detector worked, because otherwise your speed would have been even higher. So, as the officer was filling out two tickets, one for the speeding and one for the illegal radar detector, the officer said, hmm, I noticed that you're not wearing your seatbelt either. You know, that's another $75 fine, And the driver kind of laughed nervously and said, You see, officer, I had the seatbelt on, but when you pulled us over, I took it off so that I could get to my wallet in my back pocket. The wife shook her head and said, Now, dear, you know very well that you didn't have your seatbelt on. You never wear it when you're driving. The officer started filling out another ticket, and that's when the driver really lost his cool, and he yelled at his wife, why don't you please shut up? The officer leaned down and looked over at the wife and asked, does he always talk to you this way? The wife shrugged and answered, Only when he's drinking. (laughs) On Pentecost Sunday, 
The church celebrates a very special gift. We don't always know exactly what to do with the gift, but on Pentecost Sunday, the church celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit and the way that the Holy Spirit continues through her intentions and through her efforts to not let us keep our mouths shut. Pentecost is the Sunday when we celebrate not keeping our mouths shut. And it's been that way from the very beginning. From that day when the disciples and followers of Jesus had gathered in the upper room. And in the birth of the church, the Holy Spirit began influencing them in powerful ways to not keep their mouths shut. When it comes to sharing the good news of the risen Jesus Christ and our experience of that good news and of his resurrection in our lives, the Holy Spirit is determined for us not to keep our mouths shut. But even so, that is not my first inclination. You might imagine me keeping my mouth shut as something odd, continue, given how I go on and on, right? But, but my initial inclination, my natural inclination, is to keep my mouth shut. Especially when there's a risk of me being criticized for what I say. Or when there's backlash or anger for what I might say. Or when there's the risk of failure because of what I might say. Or opening my mouth and proving that I really don't know what I'm talking about. We suspected it all along. Thanks for the proof. I'll keep my mouth shut, even if I know that things are wrong, even if I know and can see that things aren't the way they're supposed to be, I'll still keep my mouth shut and I'll swallow it. But you know what? If you keep your mouth shut and swallow that long enough, you'll get sick because we're not made for that. We are made by the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to speak. German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer spoke. He spoke out and he acted, and do you know what happened to him? He was killed for it. It cost him his life, but he spoke up and he opposed the Third Reich at the end of the Second World War, and it cost him his life. But he spoke. And he has gone on record as saying, not to speak is to speak. Do you know what he means by that? Not to speak is to speak. Your silence speaks volumes. There's another phrase, an, an old Quaker phrase that says, let your life speak. Let who you are and what you're filled with and what you've been gifted by, let that speak. Whether it's in actions or words, that speaks volumes too. So that whether you keep your mouth shut or you speak, something is communicated. And what does it communicate if we don't speak? that it's really not that important, that we really don't care, that it's not that big a deal. Let your life speak. This Holy Spirit experience shouldn't come as a surprise to any of us today or back then because Jesus promised his followers and friends 
earlier in the book of Acts that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. You will experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And so one of the dramatic effects of being filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was that they began to speak as the Spirit gave them ability. Is that a back then kind of thing? Is that, is that only something relegated to history? Or, or is that possible, that kind of power available today? that empowers and enables the church to be the church. Well, that's one of the miracles of Pentecost. The other one is this, that, that some of the people misunderstood it. To be sure, who wouldn't? They thought they were crazy. Some of them thought that they were drunk. They were influenced by a different kind of spirit. And so Peter began his proclamation saying, you got it wrong. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning is if that means anything. They can't possibly be drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. And yet, some people, and I want you to catch this, some people understood. Some people got it. Some people had been waiting for a long time to hear what they had to say. Some of them were eager to hear what they had to say. Some of them were longing for what they had to say. Some of them needed what they had to say, and they heard them speaking God's deeds of power. And it found a home in them, because that is also a part of the life of the church. In every way that we can, in every way that we're gifted to share what God has done with us and for us, which, by the way, is being a witness, isn't it? What does a witness do? They share what they've seen. They share what they've heard. They share what they've experienced. I was just standing over there on the corner minding my own business when all of a sudden that asteroid fell right on that car, right over there. Strangest thing I've ever seen, but that's what happened. Witnesses share their experience, what they've seen, what they've heard. Now, you should be an expert on that, shouldn't you? On how you've been spending quite a long time with God, haven't you? On how you have experienced the Easter community, haven't you? You've been touched in some way by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, who is still doing wonderful things among us and through us, haven't you? You still have the Holy Spirit in you, which makes you, my dear friends, an expert witness on the wonderful deeds of God. Words were given, words were understood, and we can't emphasize enough how it's the Holy Spirit that orchestrates this, the Holy Spirit who continues to make the life of the church possible in any age by inspiring us to be and do everything that Christ calls us to be and do. Ordinary people inspired to do extraordinary things. Sometimes our speaking will be with words. Sometimes our speaking will be with our hands or our feet or our heart or our compassion. But nonetheless, what is in us and who is in us will find expression somehow. I like the way Joe Evans, a pastor in Georgia, put it in a fine sermon on this Pentecost story from Acts. Joe Evans asks, So what does the Spirit do? It gave the disciples the words, the words that the world could understand, 
which is absolutely a miracle that our society needs today. Does our world need more understanding? And who then shall speak it? He goes on to give a great example, I think. Just think about what happens in school boards, or city halls, over dinner tables. We read about it. Crowds of angry people show up and talk over each other all the time. Not listening, only yelling, only trying to get their words heard and not listen to what the other might be saying. If you don't say what another person wants to hear, they'll shout you down without taking the time to listen. We see it. We know it. Joe Evans continues, what Pentecost reminds us of is that communication, real communication, requires love. That's what happened so long ago. These disciples weren't talking so that they could advance their own agenda. These disciples were trying to communicate to the world how much love God has for everyone. Everyone. Does the world still need that today? Does the world still need to know that God loves everyone? Salvation to the ends of the earth, as the scripture says. Dare to speak of love, that the walls which divide our world might come tumbling down. Friends, there are people all around us that need desperately the message that God loves them. And through Jesus Christ, the the lengths to which God will go to make that love known, even through you and what you say, and what you do. Don't keep your mouth shut. Let your life speak. This morning, included in the bulletin, thanks to Pat Steckelberg, are some Pentecost phrases. Here is my challenge to you during the season of Pentecost, my dear friends. I invite you to take one of these phrases every week. One phrase for the whole week and and pay attention to how you can express that in your life and in your sphere of influence. You can start anywhere you want on the list. doesn't matter. And you can stay with one on the list if you want to stay with one. The point being, here are some prompts for speaking. Some ways that you can communicate the powerful deeds of God. And if you work your way all the way through the list, guess what? You can start all over again. You can't run out of opportunities to share these things. God will continue to give you every chance there is to let your life speak and to not keep your mouth shut. Thanks be to God. Friends, our hymn of response this morning is Number 66 in the glory to God.
I will pray. So, I invite each of you and all of you, my dear friends, to join your hearts and minds and spirits together in a time of prayer as we bring who we are, what's important to us and our world before the God who not only answers prayers, but who loves the opportunity to communicate. God, as you gather us on this Pentecost Sunday in this spirit of summer and the days grow longer and warmer and the ground warms enough to come back to life, grant us a breeze that renews us. On the breeze, send seeds of new life that find their way into us, that might grow into something beautiful for you, something that will bloom with colors as bright as righteousness. As the sun rises and the crops grow, so may we. In your word and in our worship, spirit of peace, in this season of conflict and aggression, in this season of so much anger and fear, in these uncertain times and fearful times which we live, seasons of war and violence, innocent people being killed for just going about their daily lives. God, as children, are vulnerable and at risk, and as all of us wonder what in the world is going on and what has this come to, help us. Save us from evil and free us from our addictions to to the things that ultimately do not give you glory. May every one of your children find safe haven. May every one of your children know that they are valued and be treated as such. Bend our lives, our spirits, and the universe toward the arc of your justice. Inspire us with courage to resist, to resist fear of the other, to resist our own personal prejudices, to proclaim your inclusive love, to work for peace. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, you gather diverse people on Pentecost, embolden us with a hospitality that welcomes and receives all, open our hearts to empathy and understanding and circumstances of the other. For those who are ill, we pray for your healing spirit to touch them. For those who are lonely, we pray that you might comfort them and lead them toward community. For those who are confused in their minds or hearts, we pray for mental health and healing. For those whose bodies are broken, those awaiting surgeries, those recovering from surgeries, the folks that we know that they could use your healing touch, we lift them up. We think of our friends who are in care centers or assisted living. We think of our friends who are homebound, and we, we ask that in some way, shape, or form, God, your spirit will connect us in new and vital ways. Here are the things that we lift up and the things that our spirits raised to you deep in our hearts as we pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reminder, friends, as we come to a time of offering and dedication and as you share your gifts, that we are receiving the Pentecost offering and that 40% of that offering is staying here locally to be used in a very particular way to share the wind, to share the spirit. There be you, uh, Fans will be purchased with the part of the money that stays here and given to the community food pantry for those who don't have access to those kinds of things this summer. Please join me in our prayer that dedicates our gifts to God's glory. Make us thankful every day, O oh God, for the gifts that alight upon us from your bounty. Guide us to use these offerings to your glory for the health of your people and this creation. Our closing hymn, friends, is number 408 in the glory to God. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Jesus said, Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said, The Spirit will come and stay with you forever. Friends, go in peace and love and live spirit-filled lives all of your days.